Okay, let's go over the answers to the exercise. For the very first one, we have a setup and a go procedure here to actually color the four quadrants in different colors by having the turtles, when they arrive in their respective quadrants, change their colors to the appropriate ones. Um, we have a setup button that calls this, which creates 50 turtles, puts their pens down. We have a wiggle procedure that wiggles the turtles around a little bit, moves them forward and right and left, random 15 degrees. And here is our go routine. It forces the turtles to wiggle, each turtle to wiggle. And if the turtle's x coordinate is greater than 0 and its y coordinate is greater than 0, then it must be in the upper right quadrant. And it sets its color blue. Again, uh, x coordinate 0 on the right hand side, but now below the horizon is yellow. This is on the left hand side, and above the horizon, that's red. And again, left hand side, below the horizon, and green. Let's try this out and see how it works. We'll set up, we have 50 turtles, and we will slow them down and make them go a little bit. And we can see that the turtles are actually coloring the appropriate quadrants as they move into those quadrants. Let's take a different, take a look at a, a slightly different way of doing exactly the same go routine, but instead of with if, we'll do it with if else. Again, we wiggle, but this time we test whether uh, the uh, the turtle is on the right hand side of the screen, and if it is, then we will do this whole thing, and if it's not, if it's on the left hand side, we will do this whole thing. Well, by the time we get to here, we know that we pass this test, that it's on the right hand side, and now we simply have to decide whether to go, whether it's above or below the horizon. We know that it's on the right hand side. Above the horizon is blue, and below the horizon is yellow. And um, then, of course, when we execute either one of these, we'll skip all the way down here beyond the false part of this of this particular if else. Well, exploring the false part, which means that the uh, x core is less than zero. That's this. We'll do this pair of of uh, square brackets. And again, we test whether we're above the horizon or not. We turn red or green, depending. So that's the second way of doing it. This was with if else. Let's take a look at the second exercise. And here are two ways of doing that. Uh, here's the first way. We set up uh, a reporter. Uh, we call it average product. We give it two uh, incoming parameters. And then we ask for random two. Now random two will either give us a zero or a one. And if it gives us a zero, then we'll report the average, and this is the average of the two. And if it gives us a one, we'll report the product of the two. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, exactly one of these two, the true part or the false part of this else, will be executed and each has a way of giving back the appropriate answer. But there's a different way of, uh, of uh, designing this particular reporter also, and that's this one, average product two. And now it's with an if, not with an if else. Notice that we again ask for random two and test whether it's equal to zero. And again, that's a 50% probability. And if that turns out to be true, then we will report the average. Now normally, after we go through the body of the if statement, we go down and execute the next command. But report is very special. Report, when it executes, gets out of the function, gets out of the reporter, and nothing beyond it actually is executed. So that we know that this is the last thing that will happen if random2 happens to be 0. If random2 is not 0, if it's equal to 1, then we skip this part and we simply report the product. So we can guarantee that when the reporter, when the report uh, command is executed, nothing beyond it inside that reporter will be executed. That is the final thing that it will do. Let's take a look at the third exercise. Again, two different ways. This is the third exercise, two different ways of doing it, except in this case, there's a correct way and there's an incorrect way. So let's take a look at the correct way. We want to 
color one of three possibilities with equal likelihood. And so we ask for random three. The turtle will, will execute that. And that will give you either a 0, 1, or 2. If it happens to be a 2, then, um, then we'll immediately set the color to red. And uh, we'll skip all of this. So that's one third probability. And now, two thirds likelihood, it will not be equal to a 2. And so we'll end up inside here. Well, the remaining two thirds probability, half of that, we should, uh, with with a fifty percent chance, we should uh, color blue, and fifty percent chance we should color yellow. And so we should use random two in this case to split those two colors evenly. There's a one third chance that we'll, well, we'll do this. There's a two-thirds chance that we'll do one of these two, and half of that two-thirds chance, namely one-third, will color blue, and one-third will color yellow. So that is that actually will do the exercise correctly. This, however, this is a way that you might think at first would do, do, would do it correctly, but it does not. Let's take a look at it. Normally, you would say to yourself, well, I'm going to flip a kind of three-sided coin and the faces are 0, 1, and 2 and so we say to ourselves sort of well if it comes up 0 then we want to color red and if it comes up 1 we want to color it blue and if it comes up 2 we want to color it yellow and that seems to do it but this is wrong and it will not it will not um, actually work correctly it will give us the wrong probabilities and sometimes it will not even recolor because notice that here we flip the three-sided coin, and if it turns out to be uh, zero, then yes, we, we will color it red. But what happens after that? After that, we flip another three-sided coin, because we go on after the body of the if statement. We flip yet another three-sided coin and test whether it's equal to one. Well, in this case, you know, this is a new flip. So it could perhaps be equal to one this time, in which case the, the, the turtle which has been colored red is now being recolored blue, which is not what we want. And yet again, after that, we flip a three-sided coin, and if this time it turns two, which is a slight probability, then we will recolor it yellow. Worse than that is what happens if this turns out not to be zero, then we skip the coloring red. And this one turns out not, because since this, this is independent, uh, and a new flip, it turns not to be equal to 1, so we don't do this. And this third flip, which again is a completely independent flip, not is not 2, and so we don't do that. And so we don't recolor this turtle at all. And there is some probability of that. It turns out that this is the wrong way of doing it. And I just wanted to show you that because this may be your first impulse in solving the problem. The fourth exercise can really be very, very easily executed. We want, we have, we know that want red is a slider that can range between zero and a hundred, where um, we want uh, that number to be the probability of turning a turtle red. Well, let's check it at the extremes. If want red happens to be 100, then we know that the user really, really wants the turtle definitely to be uh, uh, colored red. And it will be, because random 100 will give you back a value between 0 and 99. And that was that is always less than 100. And so this statement will always be true if want red is equal to 100, because 100 is always greater than any number between 0 and 99. and so will definitely color it red. What about zero? In the case want red is equal to zero, we definitely don't want it recolored. Let's see what the code does. Well, if want red is zero, this number can be between zero and 99. And zero is never larger than any number between zero and 99. And in particular, it's not larger than zero. So this will always be false. And you will never recolor the turtle, which is exactly what you want. Let's take a look at some number in between. Let's say want red is 40. Then, what is the chance that this, the number coming from here, from random 100, is less than 40? 
Well, they are what numbers are possible? The numbers from 0 to 39. Those are the numbers that are less than 40. How many of them are there? 40. What are the possible set of numbers? 0 through 100, 100 of them. So 40 out of 100 possibilities will satisfy this inequality, which is just exactly what we want. We want 40 possibilities out of 100, and that actually will solve the problem, and that's the end of the exercise.